Impossible is all about doing kind of small acts of kindness and sharing things and times and, and skills. Uh, we've been running for a year now and Paul heard about what we were doing and liked the idea and said, can I, can I give a songwriting, uh, songwriting talk? Um, and that's how, how, that's how this came about. And so we were listening to, just before Paul got in, I think you all heard Hope for the Future, his, his new piece. And um, maybe I'll start by just asking you how that came about and what the process of writing that was like. Yeah. Um, well, you know, Sammy Khan, the uh, writer, said, you know, it starts with a phone call. 
and uh, that's that's what happened. I got asked, would I be interested in writing music for a video game? Um, and I was just intrigued by the idea of doing something different, uh, something I'd, I'd never done before. So I was interested just to see what was involved. So the, there was a meeting set up in LA, which I went to, and just sort of said, okay, what is it? You know, what do you do? What would I do? And the guy who was the main uh, composer was a guy called Marty O'Donnell. And he said, well, it's like a film score. It's like a big, epic film score. And um, it's very complicated when, you, when it comes down to actually doing all the music because uh, in the game, if you go that way, there's that bit of music. If you go that way, there's another bit of music. If you win something, there's a hey bit of music, you know. So I said, good, you'll be doing all that then, will you? He said, yeah. So <laughs> that, was, that was good because I thought, no way I could you know, accept that. Um, so he was going to do all the impossible stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. It's a bit early, I know. Yeah. Um, and so, I, so I said, my first question, I said, well, what do you want me to do? And they gave me the answer that I hate, which is like, oh, anything you want. And it's like, oh my God, you know. Um, so I said, well, no, can you pin it down a little bit? You know, and they said, well, and they didn't pin it down too much. So, but I, I was intrigued by the idea, so I, I went away. Then I thought, well, why would they want me? Um, maybe to give them sort of ideas, uh, possibly a little bit of inspiration, because he was basically gonna do it all. He was basically gonna write the piece. Um, so I went back to my studio and just thought of um, a couple of themes, just a couple of notes that sounded like it could be epic and it could be original. You know, I knew what I kind of wanted to end up with. Um, so I did that and just recorded them very simply, sent them to him, and then he sent me <coughs> back uh, quite an arranged version on the synths and everything, um, which is great. I said, oh, that's great. You know, that's exactly what I'd imagined, only you've taken it further. So it became a fascinating sort of ping pong game mm -hmm. of I'd send him an idea, which my ideas were very simple, and then he would complicate them, mm -hmm. um, but in a, in a good way. And um, so that was that part of it all. And then uh, it turned out they also would like a song. Mm -hmm. So. Theming lyrics. Yeah, a, a, a song separate from the game rather than just song. a bomb, 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 yeah. epic. Pum, pum, epic. You know, that's, what, that's what I was sort of sending him. Uh, in the end, it, it, they wanted a, a, a song with a record, lyrics, yeah. uh, a proper kind of, kind of song. So my question then to him was, okay, where's it gonna come? What, where's it gonna be set in the music? And he showed me the little lead up, and he showed me the theme that he was working on for this section. Uh, so I, I just took those notes off him that he was going to work on. And there was, the, the, the note in common uh, with everything he was doing was E, and there was kind of C in there. So I just sort of took that and I said, okay, well, that, what it meant to me basically was two guitar chords, E and C. So I just started writing the song, and, and E's a good guitar key. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just started writing the song in that. Um, and he told me that the idea of the game was that it's a big shoot 'em up and you shoot your way and save humanity from all the aliens, um, get, therefore giving hope for the future kind of thing. He didn't say for the future. but So yeah, I just put that together, this idea, instead of a big shoot 'em up, I'll just make it a more general thing of like, you know, we need some hope for the future. Mm -hmm. So I'll just... So I, do, so, I, so I did, and that was it. And is that, is that usually the process in terms of music and lyrics, which comes first? Uh, it, it's, it, it depends. Uh, most of the time, if you're lucky, they come together. You just sort of sit down and start sort of hoping, and you, you start um, blocking stuff out with sounds. I do anyway. 
and eventually you hear a little phrase that's starting to work and then you follow that trail. You know, so I had some hope for the future. And, and that I kind of liked that as an opening because it was like, um, there is some hope for the future or some people hope for the future. So I liked, it started off interesting way, you know. Uh, and I just followed that trail through as to what that would mean to me that we'll build bridges to the sky and we'll we'll do everything. Mm -hmm. And do you normally write on guitar or piano? Or piano. Oh, okay. Guitar or piano, yeah. But not both at the same time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have a preference? Do they lend to different types of songs? That's uh, just how you feel. Really. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Guitar is interesting because you kind of cradle it. You kind of almost cuddle it. It's You hold it to you and you play, so that, that's, that kind of gives you a certain kind of feeling. Piano, you almost push it away. So that, there's just two different um, attitudes. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, I'm not sure whether the song's influenced by that, but the writing of it is, you're, you're a little more sort of in a, in a thing. I mean, we, when we were writing early on, you, you kind of find a cupboard or somewhere to go away and hide and it was like a psychiatric session where you know if you 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 felt if you, if you felt really bad you'd work it out you'd sort of you wouldn't talk to the guitar but you'd you'd kind of put your problems into the song mm -hmm. and once you'd finished the song it was like yeah you know no problem mm -hmm. yeah. so you know that's that's kind of, and that ping pong you described for doing Hope for the Future, mm. is that um, normally when you're writing songs, do you, do you enjoy that kind of collaborative process? Or do you find it, do you find it easier by yourself or do you find it easier with others? To um, with? You know, the great thing is there's no rules. I mean, I take a songwriting class at Lippa, uh, my old school in, uh, in Liverpool, and I always say to the kids, you know, there's, there's no rules. There's, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to do it. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's, um, it can happen any way, uh, but I do like collaboration. I mean, obviously writing with John was the ultimate collaboration. Um, and I, I think, you know, we were both very lucky to find each other um, because we played perfectly off each other. Mm -hmm. And an example I always give is, I was starting this song called Getting Better I'm going, it's getting better all the time. And he goes, it couldn't get much worse. <laughs> he's going, hey, okay, come on then, let's think about that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you suddenly got the foil to what you're doing. That bang, so the next line isn't just getting better still. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah. now like, oh, okay, we're going there, are we going? And so I would do that to his songs, he would do that to mine. And uh, then you suddenly find the balls you know, like a tennis mm -hmm. match, you're really having a volley, um, which was very helpful. You know? Yeah, that's very, very cool. And great fun. Um, you know, one of the amazing things about uh, me and John writing together was that I think we wrote just short of 300 songs together. And I look back on it now uh, in some kind of wonder because we never had a dry session. You know, every time we got together and sat down, we'd work for about normally about three hours, because you sort of get you bit bored after three hours. Um, but we worked for about three hours and, and nearly always come up with a song, which is really cool. pretty cool, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are any of those that you haven't done anything with that you'd want to resurrect? There's there's a few knocking around, but I mean it's difficult that because the. Why we didn't do anything with them? Because we didn't think they were any good. Yeah. So why resurrect them? Okay. You know, it's uh, <laughs> it gets tempting though because it was a Lennon McCartney or something. You know, so it's got a certain uh, interest value, if nothing yeah. else. But they're not very good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and is there ever? Um, I posted on Impossible this morning for anybody else who wasn't able to come today to ask questions, but someone asked. Um, what do you do uh, if you ever do you ever have moments where you stumble where it's, it's challenging and how do you get through those in terms of songwriting? Yeah, um, yeah, I think that's the biggest difficulty with songwriting, as it is with anything, um, is that you sort of run out of ideas 
or you get to a point and you just think, uh, how am I going to continue from here? You may have started okay, but it's, it's fizzling out. Um, what I've learned to do is just push on, even if you've hit a, a bad bit, you know, you're going to, um, da -da 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 -da, ooh, well, don't get hung up on that, ooh, because it can take hours and you just go, oh, what should I do, should I do this, should I say that? What's a better word? Oh, give me the thesaurus. Oh my God! And, you know, and you, you're fussing over it for hours. So I like to just leave the mistake in there and think I'll come back to you. You know, steamroll through it. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, so, so and you sometimes find you've left a bad bit in there, um, but you hope to always catch them and go back. Um, an early song that I was writing with John was one that I. Often one of us would start the song, then the other one would help work on it. And I'd, I'd started one, it ended up being called I Saw a Stand in There, mm -hmm. an early Beatles song. And, um, and my opening was, um, she was just 17. She'd never been a beauty queen, you know. If Bob Dylan could have handled, just 17, never been a beauty queen. <laughs> he could have pulled it off, but you know, it was like, I was uh, stuck and didn't like it, but I plowed on, knowing I'd come back to it. And uh, that was around about the time John and I were starting to write together. So I showed him the song, so 17, never been a beauty queen. And we both kind of cringed, like, ooh, you know, maybe not. Um, and then we came up with, you know what I mean, <coughs> which, uh, comedian friend of mine years later said, no, Paul, I'm not sure we do know what you mean. <laughs> You're just 17. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, it's, you just, that, that's, the, that's my trick, is to just plow through, hoping that when you come back to it, you'll, you'll, you'll be confident enough, having finished the song, to fix that bit. Mm -hmm. um. And your last answer made me think, how did that begin? You say when you started writing with John, like what was the, be your, what was the beginnings of that? Um, well, we met through a friend of mine, uh, it was called Ivan. Uh, it was born on the same day as I was in Liverpool. We went to school together, so we were really good mates. And he was friends with, with John. So we went to this uh, village fete, we were both there together. And um, I got to know John. Through, through Ivan. Um, and normally, you know, you'd be talking to people in conversation, so they watch your hobbies, or I like doing this, or like cycling, or like swimming, or, and I would say to people, I like songwriting, you know, I've written a couple of songs, and everyone would go, oh yeah, and ignore it. But John went, oh yeah, so have I. So that was like, ooh. <laughs> what, you've written a couple of songs? Yeah, so, well, show me yours and I'll show you mine, baby. <laughs> so that was what happened. We got together and he showed me the crap he was writing. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, he showed me what he was doing, I showed him the crap I was writing. Uh, and that was basically it. We, we came together through the common interest of songwriting and then just started uh, having sessions, um, normally at my house, uh, where we just, we try and write something, you know. Mm -hmm. We wrote our earliest ones, which are the ones I'm talking about, we, they're not really been published. Um, they were okay, you know, but they were very um, innocent. Uh, they weren't, we didn't think they were good enough, you know, to actually, but, um, it was, it was a start and it was an exciting thing to do, you know, and we just gradually started to get a little bit better. And that was the great thing about something like songwriting, is that if you do get better, then it really is a great journey, you know. Uh, so our original songs, because we were in a group and there were fans, they were all um, very personal. And they all had a personal pronoun in them. Love me, do. P.S. I love you. From me to you. She loves you. You know, it's like goes on. I want to hold your hand. Uh, because we were directly 
trying to communicate with the people who liked us. You know, uh, as it as it went on, then we got a little bit more. Um, we felt that we we didn't have to do that. You know, we'd sort of done thank you, girl, and you know we sort of got past that phase. So we it started to. That was the nice thing, you know. We started to actually climb the staircase and feel that uh, we could we could get a little bit more complicated. And we were getting older. We were getting a bit more experience. What age is this? Um, twenty-two. Yeah. <laughs> Very old. Very old. <laughs> we really felt old. You know, we thought it's amazing, though, isn't it? The perspective at that age. I remember we were we. Uh, me and George were kind of 17 and he was 16. And there was a guy that went to John's art school who was 24. And we really felt sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it must be horrible to be that old, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we were kind of relatively young. Uh, but then you know, we, we came down to London, got a bit more sophisticated and started uh, writing slightly more complicated things. Yeah, cool. All right, I'm going to start throwing out to the to the room for questions. Who has some? First hand up. Hi, Paul. Um, Hi. I'm Dan. I'm a songwriter as well. And um, for me, like, I think you're one of the most underrated guitar players as well. I don't think you give given enough credit for being a guitar hero, personally. And one of my favourite songs of yours is um, Blackbird. I love that chord progression. It's what I play with my friends. And we always have disputes about what is the correct descending pattern and all that stuff. I've got it here, I've got it behind me. Left handed? No, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness. But, no. but I was just wondering how long you had that under your fingers, whether that was something that came very quickly and naturally, or whether it was one you had to chip away at, or? No, you know, the, the, you know there's often a kind of simple answer to these things. In my case, there often is anyway, you know, because I kind of take the easy way out. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a very complicated attitude. Um, so, in actual fact, that was uh, a party piece that me and George used to have. We, we, we used to play this piece by Bach. It's a fugue. It kind of goes... And we didn't know that bit. But we knew the front a little bit. And it was really kind of showing off. Um, so we were... But you used two notes at the same time. There's a bass line playing against the top melody. And where it goes to dun 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 that dun 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 I always like that little bit so I could change it to dun 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 and it just that was the start of uh, Blackbird. So then I just followed the trail of these two notes going together, a bass note going with a melody, and that's it just goes up the up the uh, then it comes back down again. Um there's basically variations on that little trick of Bach's. It's a counterpoint thing. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's the melody uh, and the bass at the same time, which normally, you know, you either do chords or you play your lead melody or you play your bass. Yeah. And that, that was fascinating for us. Let's say it was a little party trick we used to do. Cool, and behind? Yeah, so first of all, I'm huge on this one. Until you taught me to play the guitar, well, I remember coming back, not obviously directly, but I remember coming back from chapels in 1969 with this sort of treasure box of the Beatles White Album sheet music. Um, and, uh, you know, just the chords were splendid, you know, Mark and my dear. And what I've always been intrigued about is, I know you've always proclaimed reading music is something you never quite mastered or so as a, like a classical pianist. But it, right from the beginning with some like It's For You and so on, you had a huge knowledge of keys and harmonies and chords, you know, C minor sevens and F B elevens and all these things. I'm talking a bit pompous now. But I couldn't understand that sort of um, paradox of you saying you didn't know music, yet your music so sophisticated and so many songs, extraction and stuff like that, step inside and up, huge Brazilian chords. And I just wondered, were you a great student of the great, uh, I know you love Frank Besser as, as one of your uh, catalogues, and um, did you study Irving Berlin and Gershwin's songs as sheet music, or ukulele sheet music and so on? 
Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I know what you mean. I took piano lessons as a kid, like a lot of people, da, 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 and it seemed like homework to me. But I loved music on the radio, see an old Fred Astaire movie, and you know, in heaven, I'm in heaven. And I, I loved the music itself. Well, I hated the homework associated with learning music because it didn't it it didn't seem to go together, you know. Um, so I could never do that. I had three attempts once when I was a little kid. My parents sent me. Once again when I was sixteen, I thought well, maybe time to try and learn. But it was still da 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 da. I was like, ah, get out of here, you know. And then uh, more like when I was about 21 or something, I, I gave it another go. But by then I'd kind of written Eleanor Rigby and da 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 <laughs> You know, I was screaming at that by then. So um, what we did was um, we kind of, we got the basic chords on guitar just because like everyone knew them. So you, your mates, you would just go E. And show each other E, A, um, B7 was the one we didn't know, so we had to go across Liverpool to find a guy <laughs> we did know it. Um, but so we gradually just got more chords uh, on, and a bit on the piano too. We had a piano at home, so I could find chords there, and um, you picked them up. Anyone you ran into who was playing a chord you didn't know, you said, "Whoa, wait a minute, what's that?" And you know they'd show you A minor or something. You go, great. So you gradually, and then with Hamburg, of learning so many songs just to get through a long evening without just having to repeat all the time. You soon had amassed quite a lot of chords, um, and some of the sophisticated ones you're talking about. There was this guy. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you might have heard the story, but there was this guy in Liverpool at the guitar shop we used to get our guitars from called Jim Gretty, and uh, he was the, the salesman, but he was a jazz guitarist, so he always had his guitar there, and he'd play. And so we'd kind of listen to him, and he played this very sophisticated chord. Remember me and George were standing there like wide-eyed, wow, what was that? You know, and he said, well, you know, doom, 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 ding, ding, and this weird thing at the end. And uh, so we, you know, we swallowed that, and that added to our repertoire, and I'd go home and I would like write a song with that chord in it. It's the second chord in Michelle. Nice. Michelle, oh boy, baby. You know, so I, what are you doing? <laughs> 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 um, no, so you know, you, you, you just would gather chords from friends and from mates and things. And you didn't necessarily have to know what they were called. You know, there'd be, and you'd listen to records a lot and play one little section with a chord you didn't know over and over and go, okay, ding, yeah, okay, that's got a ding in it, and ding, ding, yeah, ding, ding. Um, there's a sort of, and we'd give them our own names, you know, it'd be like F Demented. <laughs> you know, it'd be, um, uh, but that did, you know, we, um, you know, we got one off, there was, a, there was an old Coasters record that we, that we got a chord from. Um, uh, so yeah, you just put them all together and then I think then the songs, you, you try to fit them all in and it will have looked very sophisticated. Well, thank you very much. Yeah.